Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of what I'm now calling the Fintech Writers Workshop because that sounds kind of more grand and hopefully more people will be attracted to come and look at it and then I'll feel I'm being more helpful. So today I'm talking about consensus. Consensus is the big annual um, conference about blockchain, cryptocurrency and stuff like that organized by the people at Coindesk. Um, I had a really fun time at the very first one, by the way. I was I, I was there with um, Vitalik Buterin and a couple of other people. And it happened to be the day that the story broke about Craig Wright being Satoshi Nakamoto. It was a very fun day. Anyway, nothing to do with this. So uh, I was invited along to by Michael Casey, one of the organisers. Um, Michael used to write for the Wall Street Journal, wrote a, a book, The Age of Cryptocurrency, with Paul Vigner and was kind enough to write the foreword to my book. So Michael, my new book, The Currency Cold War. So Michael asked me if I'd be interested in joining the opening session of Consensus this year. And I said, yes. And so this is how I put that together. So when the agenda came along, um, I was very happy to see that I was on the opening morning. That's great. Um, it's only a 15 minute segment out of a much longer kind of morning session um, all about digital currency and things like that. And so and I was paired with Sheila Warren, who is um, comes from the legal side of things and has been working with the WAF on this sort of thing. So she has a big institutional perspective. It's very useful. And I thought, well, I've only got 15 minutes. I'm not going to make slides or anything. There's no time to make long, you know, discursive points. Can't tell stories, which is, you know, my preferred way of trying to persuade people about things and also helping people to remember things. So I thought instead I'd make myself essentially just a set of flashcards that would help me through the sort of 15 minutes. So the question is, um, what do I put on those cards? I mean, what do I want out of that segment? And I was thinking, well, really, I just want two things. I want myself to to find out what informed people. And there's some very informed people in these segments. Think about digital currency. That's one of the things I miss from going to conferences is like finding out what intelligent other people think. Um, but also to plug my book. Let's be honest about this sort of thing. So how can I do that in 15 minutes and how can I make some cards? So I had to think about my sort of hook like what's the hook that will get people to listen to me and bearing in mind that no one cares what I say like so to most of the audience there it'll be well who's this English guy what's he talking about you know there'll be massed ranks of Bitcoin to be like who is this old guy what on earth is he talking about so I thought well I can't go by who I am and I can't go by the fact just that I've written the book. So my idea was, since they don't care what I think, why don't I pick some quotes out of the book that come from people that the audience will recognise? And instead of telling stories and things, what I'll do is I'll drop in these quotes to make some different points as we go through the discussion. And um, and then I thought uh, the title of the session is about the new space race which which I wanted. And so then I thought, well, I should also put something in to sort of justify that to say to people that this isn't this isn't, you know, just ridiculous marketing talk. There is really something going on here. So basically, then I had to think of two things like what quotes do I want to put in and what quotes do I want to use to support my sort of space race idea? So the place to start is quotes about digital currency. I mean, I have loads of them in the book. I, I, I like to start every chapter of the book with a with a quote just helps me kind of focus and think about what's in the chapter so i have lots to choose from uh, so where to start well the obvious place to start i think is with mark carney talking about synthetic hegemonic currencies or six as i insist on calling them because uh you know he's not just some guy right mark carney says you know, we have to think about the destabilizing dominance of the US dollar. If some Bitcoin kid says it or if some, you know, English financial digital service consultant says it, well, whatever. But, you know, when Mark Carney says it, you've got to take it pretty seriously. So I'll start with Carney's quote. That's a good anchor point. Then I want to sort of broaden it out. So I'll go with um, I think I'll go with Niall Ferguson. 
the historian you know he wrote he wrote one of the very best books about this you know he wrote the book the ascent of money which actually i discovered i've got two copies of on my shelf when i went looking for it the other day to look something up and you know he's written a couple of things about look you've got to take this stuff really seriously and he's written some great stuff about uh, you know the evolution of currencies over time and you know there was a time when the guilder was the global currency and then it was the pound and blah 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 and so he says about dominance in digital payments and he's written a lot about undermining american hegemony in this space so that well i'll go with ferguson where else could i go well i thought actually i need to something punchy something a bit controversial that that audience will respond to and so i thought well maybe i'll go down the route around sanctions and american sanctions i love the economists quote about sanctions being financial carpet bombing um, and Jack Lew, the ex-Treasury Secretary. So this is a great quote because he says, basically, if you mess about with sanctions too much, you'll push people out of the existing financial system and they'll start looking for alternatives. And I think that's a great point to make because it might be a little long for this thing, but that would be a definite possibility. Or, I mean, I love this thing from The Economist. America has weaponized the dollar because that's a good, you know, whichever side of the sort of wherever you are on the political spectrum without saying one side is right or wrong, you know, this is true. And, you know, I think for the audience that that particular audience, I think this will be a good, you know, this will be a good strong point with that audience. It will make them think so. And I also thought, well, you know, given that this opening session has people whose opinions I think are pretty serious opinions, people I pay attention to, I should probably include a couple of quotes from people who are in the session with me. Um, and I knew that they were going to, before I come up, there's an interview with Larry Summers, who used to be Treasury Secretary under Clinton, really serious, you know. So I thought, well, I, I'll use a quote from Larry Summers. Now, I quote him in the book talking about, in the context of this war game, which I think is a good point to bring up. So I'll mention the war game because that, like, like the fact they've been war gaming the rise of a Chinese digital currency is interesting in itself, but also the fact that in that war game, you know, the outcomes were not that great from a US point of view also needs flagging up. That suggests, you know, you need a strategy about it. So Larry said, you know, basically, instead of mucking about with central bank digital currency, why don't we try and fix SWIFT? It doesn't work that well, etc. So he's on that side of the fence. He thinks that um, we should uh, put the effort into making the current infrastructure better rather than going around it with central bank digital currency, which is a very good point to make. So I'll, I'll include that. Uh, so then I started thinking, OK, let's go to this space race point and try and finish on a couple of things which support this idea that we're in some kind of a space race. So I quite like this one. This is from the book from Dan Wang, who's an analyst out of, I think, Hong Kong. And he said, um, instead of realizing a Sputnik moment, the, eunuch is tr the US is triggering one in China, which is a super interesting point to make. It might be a bit too nuanced for this sort of discussion, though. But I know that Christopher Giancarlo is on as well. And he said earlier in the year um, that, you know, the, the digital currency rivalry is reminiscent of, of a space race and that's good enough so if somebody serious like that says it's a space race it's not just me saying it's a space race that's a great point to make as well so i'll make sure i try and bring that point in so if given that i've got 15 minutes that i'm sharing with sheila i've got some good strong quotes there that make some good points i don't know what questions they're actually going to ask me i don't know what sheila's going to say but um but that's okay i think that'll be okay so then there's the question of what um, what to do with this material. So I, I try to make the point when I'm trying to help other people in this space. You know, I never write stuff just to be used once. As soon as I start putting together a deck, I start thinking, well, where else can I use this? And actually, as I started putting these quotes together in this deck, I thought, hmm, actually, I can add a couple more quotes into this deck and then it'll be a useful deck for doing radio interviews or other internet interviews. I have a couple of magazine interviews coming up about the book soon, so it'll be a very useful resource for that as well. So that's very handy. Um, assuming it goes OK, I will put together a blog post about it. Um, I'll pick one of the points that comes up 
in the morning something is interesting something i want to say something interesting about on the blog i don't know what it'll be but um, but i'll pick something and that will give me an excuse to use a couple of pictures from the um from the event maybe link to a video of the event um you know interesting so there'll be some actual media on it and that sort of thing so that'll give me a good blog post and then as i always do with blog posts i'll see whether that blog post can be expanded into something that might be a a magazine article or, or something so that's good it also gave me the idea while i was putting this together why don't i take some of these quotes and just post them onto social media with a link to the book and um, you know maybe it's just an interesting way of getting some more attention in the book by saying you know this is what other people are saying about these things not not just what i'm saying about them so i think that could be good as well so we'll see how that goes and we'll see if it drives any more traffic to the to the website um so there we go so that's how that's how i've gone about putting together uh, some material for a short i mean it's much harder to write material for these short i mean everybody knows this I and mean, it's that old quote you know i'm sorry i wrote you such a long letter i didn't have time to write you a short one um but i, th I think the quotes idea is a good idea and we'll see how it goes I hope you've found this useful. I really do appreciate the feedback. Astonishing, I've already had some. So, um, so please um, let me know if I'm being helpful to you. Thanks a lot. Bye.